In the following videos I'm going to talk about doing testing patterns or using what we call inferential statistics. So I'm now going to describe the tools that we've been doing in um, the video on describing patterns but we'll be trying to test for or use statistical tests. Um, one thing you should remember when doing statistical tests is that you can only falsify. We do not prove, we say that it is not something else. And what we do typically in the tools in ArcGIS is that you test for a null hypothesis, so that's one that you want to reject, that your data set is completely spatially random. So that whatever pattern you're looking at be the point patterns, so the, the pattern, the firms are randomly distributed throughout the area of Copenhagen. And um, that will be your null hypothesis. And what you're going to test if is, can we say that that's not the case? We can, can we with some statistical certainty say this? No, the points are not randomly distributed throughout Copenhagen. Or if you're looking at polygons, so our firms, they can locate themselves more or less randomly, but our municipalities, they are fixed. We can't move them around. But what we can do is that we can see if we take the observations that say income and then randomly distribute the income observations upon those municipalities how does that compare to the patterns we get? So we again be testing both for points that can locate themselves randomly or for polygons that are fixed because they are fixed municipalities. We will be testing for this complete randomness in either their location or in their assignment of their attributes. So in both polygons, it's mo most a question about what is the neighbor? Are they, if given the value from one municipality, does that give us more or less information about the neighbors? So that's um, what we talk about when we talk about this complete spatial randomness. That is that if you have points, they are randomly distributed, or if you have polygons that are fixed in their location, such as municipalities, that knowing whatever value a specific municipality has that will not give you any information about the neighbors that's what we call spatial randomness so that's the basic the null hypothesis that all of these tests that uh, we'll be talking about use but what is this spatial randomness really well it really relates to the other term of geography namely autocorrelation or spatial autocorrelation um, there is what commonly known as the first law of geography or Tobler's law of geography, namely that everything is related to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. So that's what we call a positive spatial autocorrelation. Near things are more related than distant things. That's positive spatial autocorrelation. That means that we have down here I made three examples um, of raster check cells and if you have a spatial autocorrelation knowing what was in a value so if it is red there is a higher chance of its neighbors being red than white if it's white there will be a higher chance of its neighbors being white than red so that's what we call a positive spatial autocorrelation. A negative spatial autocorrelation is relatively seldom. Um, it typically happens in situations of competition. Um, for instance, if you have large trees, you typically don't have another large tree just close to a, a one large tree. There has to be some different distance between them. And this is what we then call a negative spatial autocorrelation. So if we know that our cell is white, there is a higher chance of its neighbors to be red. 
or if we know that it's red, there will be a higher chance of its neighbors being white. So that's a negative spatial autocorrelation. Then we have a zero spatial autocorrelation. Really never happens. I, uh, it's extremely seldom, but that's our null hypothesis. That's what we're testing for. And we say that if we know the color of the cell, be it red or white, that would give us no information about its neighbors. They have, will have exactly the same chances as any other cell to be red or white. That's a zero spatial autocorrelation. If you look at this with point data, a positive spatial autocorrelation means that our point observations are clustered together, while, while a negative spatial autocorrelation will say that they are as dispersed as possible, that they have located themselves so they are as far away from each other as possible within that given space. And a zero spatial autocorrelation that this specifies that they are randomly distributed throughout our space. So these are our three things that we will be testing for throughout all of these tools. Oh, the tools, what they do is that we talked about already in our grouping analysis that we have to go in and look at the output of our results. And most of these tools, they generate a HTML document. And in this HTML document, there is a nice little normal distribution function here. And what we have in the center of it, that's our complete spatial randomness. And then we'll have, for most of them, we'll have two tails that are significant. Um, one will be if they are significant with a negative autocorrelation, and another one will be significant with a positive autocorrelation. So, and then our observations of our model, they will be placed somewhere on this axis so you can have a visual indicator of whether or not if you have a spatial randomness or we have a positive autocorrelation or negative autocorrelation. It will also specify a p-value which specifies how significant it is. So if you have a p-value of 0.5 that means that there will only be 0.5% of a random runs that will be more positively spatial autocorrelated. We also have a C-score, um, or negative, by the way. The P-score says to whatever side you're looking at. The C-score, or Z-score, indicates, has a indicator where you can see whether it is positive or negative. So you can use this diagram to compare um, the dis your distribution compared to a randomness. I should say that um, it might not necessarily be that your data really is random, like has this nice norm distribution. Um, so it you might have situations where you should go a bit further than using these tools. But it is a good start at least. Um, so that's the general for all our of these inferential that you do the test for null hypothesis, that is that complete randomness, and you'll get, here's the output of your tools, you'll get this nice this graphical visualization where you can see if it is random or if it is to one of, far from random and to which side, so if there is an indication of positive or negative spatial autocorrelation. So, in our map, if you have run a tool of the spatial statistic analysis tools, what we're interested in is to go down into your result window, which is in my case, I always have it as a tab window together with my table of contents and all these things. If you don't have that, you can go and find it under geoprocessing and results. Once you run a tool, it will generate a little output in the results window. 
And here you have the whole message part, which gives us standard messages. You can view it. If you choose view, you can have it as a nice little text instead. Easier to read, typically. Um, that gives us the basic statistics of what you're doing. If you want the more nicely formatted HTML document, you have your report file. You simply double click on that and it will launch in a web browser. So here we have our data set from the tool I was running, what that is. And here we have our complete randomness and my data set here is far out to the corner here. So it has been classified as being clustered and it's with a p-value of very, very small of being a random data set. So this is absolutely not random. And if you're going to say what it is then, we say it has a tendency to be clustered. And we can give the C-score. The C-score is not something about significance, but it says that the C-score for it being in this case, clustered is minus 14, and we can use that to compare different uh, clusterednesses. But it, it is not a statistical proof of it being clustered. What we can, the only thing we do is that we prove that it is not random. But how not random it is is not what we are testing. But we can say that it is of a C value, so of 14 point, minus 14.5 being indicating that it is clustered. So that was using the basic result window to get some idea about your spatial statistics.